Hi, everyone. Uh, we'll see how this works. Thank you, uh, first of all, to the Office of Research for the opportunity to embarrass myself in a quick lightning five minutes. Um, no, seriously, thank you for, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today uh, about uh, our lab's efforts in trying to improve recovery after stroke. My name is Mark Damani. I'm an assistant professor of neurobiology. Um, no, I don't do social media. Um, I'm in sciences and mathematics, and I'm originally from the DC area, and moved here about a year ago with my family, and we're loving it. So, um, let's. So, what you're seeing right now is uh, the Milky Way galaxy, our Milky Way galaxy, and really the center portion of it. And I like to give this as a visual because there are about a hundred billion stars here that you're you're seeing in the central portion. And why it's a good visual analogy is that you have about a hundred billion cells in your brain, and each one of them makes about ten thousand connections with other neurons. And so our challenge is then to understand these trillions of synapses and how they work, and especially how they might be able, how we might be able to help them recover after something traumatic like a stroke. So stroke represents um, one of the leading causes of disability and death in the country and in our county. And so our challenge then is to try to find out how we can help those, one of, some of those trillions of synapses that are still there um, to regenerate. And that is because our central nervous systems have a very limited capacity to regenerate. So we have to help the things that are still there help us improve function. And it turns out that we have a good opportunity to do this because we have in development a short critical window, critical period, where our brains are highly plastic, able to repair, for example, in this upper window of an animal, two weeks when it's able to repair its brain. And it turns out that after a stroke, you also have about two weeks where your brains are highly malleable, trying um, against all odds to recover and repair itself. And so again, the question is, which of those trillions of synapses might we target to help us recover um, after injury? Um, and if we knew that, we could go in during that time period and really help us um, engineer some targeted therapeutics. And so it turns out that all of your senses are routed through a central area of your brain called the thalamus. The thalamus takes all of this information, sends it via information sending parts called axons to the cortex where you process and that's what underlies your ability to do all of these things, especially something like touch and movement. And so it turns out that these thalamocortical axons that underlie all of these things can be stimulated experimentally in an animal model of stroke. So for example, the ones that go to the motor control area. And if you do that, what happens is that animals who have undergone this experience are able to recover. You can see the stimulated one recovers all of its baseline motor function when you stimulate those thalamocortical axons in the motor area, but those that don't get stimulation only recover to about 60%. And so what we can do is actually image this process. So this is a video showing you thalamocortical axons that are actively engaged. That's what all those little dots are that are lighting up. And so we can do this in a living animal when it's behaving and look at them. So this is what our collaborators are doing right now. And what we're asking is which ones are resilient? Which ones are still around after a stroke? Which ones are actively participating in regenerating our brains and our, and our motor function? And if we can do that, we can really find ways to target them. So that question really involves understanding what they look like. What makes them special? What makes resilient ones are special? So we're getting brains right now from our collaborators. We're taking them to this huge thing called the electron microscope. And we are able to produce images like the panel on your right, which show the intricate anatomy of these thalamocortical axons. We can link it to whether or not they were functional, resilient after stroke, or whether they weren't. 
And what we can do is reconstruct these things in three dimensions. We can find out what parts of it, like the red parts, which are synaptic connections with other neurons, how big those are in resilient ones which is versus unresilient ones. Those blobs are energy powerhouse mitochondria in those axons. We can look at the little vesicles that release neurotransmitter, which are those little red jobbies that you see on the panel on the right. And so we can, the, the thought is here, what our hope is, is that if we can understand what the critical features are of these thalamocortical axons that make them resilient, we can target them um, with therapeutic interventions in order to recover our function after stroke. So thank you very much for the opportunity and thanks for listening. <laughs>